Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be joining in, in this RCOPF uh, symposium. Um, just before I start sharing my screen, uh, you've heard from the previous three speakers how COVID has impacted on exams, on training, um, and on uh, recruitment to the specialty. Uh, but as Bernie alluded to in the first of his sl slides, really, the impact on surgical training globally has been massive. But the one small silver lining to this COVID cloud is that has made us think outside the box and how we deliver our surgical uh, training. And in the next 15, 20 minutes, we just want to show some of the remote uh, supervision techniques, which have been devised mainly by our trainees incredibly innovative trainees and how we can uh, make the most of training opportunities and how we can receive training from great trainers around the world who are in a different country from us. Um, so I'm just going to start sharing my screen now. And hopefully you can see those slides. Good. So financial disclosures, I have designed and own the simulated ocular surgery and simulation gallery websites which feature in this presentation. So I'm just going to play this video. I'm going to speed through it a little bit. It was designed by Sunil Mamtora and in it he shows how we can actually uh, have remote supervision of trainees undergoing simulation training when they don't have a, a wet lab, but they have a theatre space which is vacant uh, and some kit to help them with that remote supervision. So here we go. So Sunil here is describing how to use a system called MicroRec. MicroRec is a company which make these 3D printed adapters for any operating microscope or slit lamp for that matter. Uh, and it fits with any mobile device, be it an iPhone or an Android device. Um, so the MicroRec is attached to the teaching arm of the microscope or to the teaching arm of the slit lamp. Um, an adapter for your phone. And of course, the phones these days, especially iPhones, with these amazing uh, uh, high definition cameras, the picture you're getting of the supervised technique or indeed live surgery is much better than almost any uh, camera attached to an operating microscope. So this can be streamed live to your supervisor via Zoom, who's in a, in a different part of the hospital or outside the hospital altogether. You can use it to uh, record live surgery and then get feedback later on from your consultant during uh, the end of the operating list. So it's a very simple way of doing this. You can also then uh, stream your videos for, uh, directly to the uh, screen in theater so the theater team can see in high definition uh, the surgery. So the MicroRec system is a great bit of kit for not only theater remote supervision, but also in casualty uh, sessions. So for example, I'm just pausing the video here with the slit lamps in Cheltenham and uh, George Sulla in London is doing this with their micro recs. You can have a relatively junior trainee seeing patients and being remotely supervised by a more senior uh, clinician elsewhere. So they're getting exactly the same view in their slit lamp uh, as the trainee is, is getting and we're doing a pilot project uh, on that. So if you don't have a micro rec, USB to any laptop and then use that in any video calling app such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams. As we can see, the quality is excellent and we can see Sono doing a beautiful three-step incision. So it's a DVI system out from your microscope linked up to the, uh, your laptop with a video capture card. And that provides, again, really good quality uh, imaging, which can be streamed live. The other setup we've used is not only this, but also a camera on the trainee's hands. So you're getting two feeds of the supervisor, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, with Will Dean supervising Sunnel, and he's getting a picture of his hands here and also the capsular axis. Okay, yeah, you can see that really nicely here. Here Good, and then keep taking it out into orbit. And then once you've about there found your, yeah, that's, that's perfect, and then start 
just re-gripping and leading it exactly where you want it to go on that plane, on that circumference, that's very good. Always worth re-gripping before you come to the 12 o'clock position. Yes, this is very funny. Yeah, yeah. So you can see the view that Will is getting is fantastic. He can see exactly what Sunil is seeing. And in fact, in this next little video clip, uh, when Sunil was doing a more mature cataract, Sunil was struggling to see the edge of the rexus. So he can't see it, but Will can actually see where the edge of the rexus is. I, I don't think it's all the way out there. Um, it's probably closer to the centre there. Or is this just a big bubble of viscoelastic? I think yeah. that's more the viscoelastic. I think it's just gone out towards um, the three o'clock position and down ever so slightly. So around about there, down a little bit. There, that's it, that's it, that's it. So you can see Will was able to successfully direct Sunil to the edge of the capsular axis flap. So you get this amazingly uh, high resolution, real time uh, feedback. And it's something that can be set up in any theater uh, and then linked to Zoom. But the extra camera on the hands is great because there were a few occasions when Sunil didn't have his wrists in the right position and Will was able to give him guidance. If you just have the view down the, the microscope, you miss some of those little cues. So the next thing we're going to talk about are the digital dry labs using these compact Zeiss STEMI microscopes, which are linked with their internal Wi-Fi network to an iPad. So you can view trainees uh, operating um, on this iPad system. And here's a screenshot of my uh, LabScope app, which is the free app downloaded onto your iPad or iPhone. And you can see there are eight trainees operating at one time. You can click on one of these videos. Uh, you can record what they're doing. And in pre-COVID, times we ran dry labs uh, like this uh, and used them to record trainee surgery. And the nice thing about this system is you don't have to be right beside the trainee. You can be in the corner of, of the room watching them so they don't feel that pressure of their consultant sort of breathing down their neck. And the next little video is just how these work in practice. So they've got some of them have got a camera on top and that camera can be attached then with an HDMI cable to a large screen. I'm just going to pause the video. So uh, we've got two corneal surgeons here. Paul Tomlins is under undergoing the dem undertaking rather the demonstration here. Alex Short is then pointing to what's going on in this big plasma screen and the trainees are watching that. And once they've watched the video, they then copy what's being done. So complex corneal laceration here that Alex is suturing. And once he's undertaking the suturing, they practice that. This was another workshop going on the same day, which was a trabeculectomy workshop. And Nit and Anand here and myself are watching a trainee doing a releasable suture on a trabeculectomy flap. We can record that, play it back to the trainee who can then refine their technique. So the college have adopted this. This is a fantastic facility that we have in London. Uh, this is the dry lab section of the uh, skills faculty uh, center. And these are the STEMI microscopes all set up for a course. And these are screenshots taken of a corneal graft and a, a scleral uh, fixed IOL taken down the STEMI microscopes. So with COVID, of course, running face-to-face -face courses have become difficult. So how can we actually use this great set up for providing remote training. Well, the trainees can take these microscopes home, can link them to uh, Zoom. Uh, and the next video is a video of a workshop we ran with Uday Devgan, the cataract coach in LA. And this is Uday's take on our remote capsular exodus training with four uh, trainees at home in the UK and uh, Uday in Beverly Hills. Cataractcoach.com. Remote Capsule Access Training is the world's first remote digital dry lab. I recently had the opportunity, through the courtesy of Professor John Ferris, to participate 
in the world's first remote learning digital dry lab. So I was here in Los Angeles, and there were doctors in training in the UK who were using a surgical microscope in their own home and using the internet connection to broadcast to me their creation of a capsular axis in a model eye. And I could guide them remotely, and we had a fantastic time. We had a handful of young doctors, all did great and really improved their skills. And I think this is something very important. This is the way you can do things in the future. You can have a coach like me helping you and coaching you from many thousands of miles away. And I want to show you the video. Check this out and we'll talk more at the end. Remotely supervised capsular axis simulation session with Uday Devgan, the cataract coach. Using Zoom video conferencing, we ran this simulation session with four trainee surgeons at home in various locations in the UK. Uday was able to join us from LA to give us live feedback and tips on our capsular axis techniques using the model eyes from Philips Studio. We used a semi 305 microscope with an axial cam as the camera feed for the Zoom call, so the supervising surgeon can simultaneously see the microscope feed and discuss methods for improving practice. Being able to pin different video feeds means the trainer can watch multiple surgeries at once or just one individual feed. Now watch for some clips of our supervision session. And now look at your tip and force and trace the circle way better. That looks perfect now. And then you do the same thing now, re-grab. And now obviously your base is towards the right and your tips are to the left. Perfect. Yeah, fantastic. And now here at the end, keep keep tracing it. Don't pull centrally. Keep tracing it like you're doing it. The, the Rex is even has to go around one more time. Then you'll finish it and you won't be able to see it. But it's been there. Now it's perfect. So if you have a spot that's irregular, just just encompass it or encircle it with the new rexes that you want to do. Now I usually do a counterclockwise rex, but there's some cases where we're just I go clockwise. It really doesn't make a difference. So as you can see, it was just a fantastic hour and a half session with one of the world's best uh, trainers. He thought it was great. And in the word of Will Dean, who'll be known to, to many of you, Will said this is really democratizing you know, eye surgery training. So no matter where you are in the world, you can have access to fantastic high quality training. So at the college, we recently ran the cataract complications course. And we had 12 trainees in the dry lab, which you saw pictures of a few minutes ago. And Rebecca and Sunil, two of our trainees, were at home. Uh, and they were being supervised remotely by Larry Benjamin. So they were able to join in in the course virtually. And it's a form of hybrid course. The recent cataract surgery complications course was the first of the college courses to be run both virtually and in person. The virtual participants were able to watch the talks and engage with the speakers in the comfort of their own home via Zoom. Screen sharing meant they were able to watch the lectures and videos in real time along with the in-person participants. With a STEMI microscope and Axie cam connected to Zoom, the virtual participants could also join in with the practical side of the course, performing Mayugan ring, capsula hooks, and capsular tension ring, insertion and removal using the model eye. There was even a remote supervisor, Mr. Larry Benjamin, who was also at home, who watched and gave advice and guidance to the virtual participants. He could watch both participants simultaneously, and each trainee could also watch the other's progress. Here are some clips taken from the remotely supervised Zoom call. So if your deficiency was uh, at say three o'clock on the left-hand side there, then it would go in as you're doing it because then it sort of pushes against the deficiency as you put it in. Um, alternatively, you can just flip it upside down and do it the other way if the deficiency is to the right. Again, so if you, if you try and engage that, you might find it's too big to go through. Okay. I know you're in. Good. Well done. Well done. And gently guide it round with the injector. Is it under the capsule? That's good.
be careful at this point. That's it. And that, that often happens, that top scroll going over the edge of the injector. So you, you probably can get it out like that, but if you want to be uh, obsessive, then that, yeah, you just manipulate that into the cartridge with the hook. That's it. It should probably come out of the wound at that size anyway, but that's um, I'm just going to forward on to putting in some MST capsule retractors for um, a localized again, logic analysis. If you can uh, leave it as it is for the moment and do one, then the bag is under tension and it won't move while you take them out. So it's probably, you know, you could do them one at a time. So I'm just pausing, but you can see really great resolution video and it meant that Rebecca and Sunil could join in with all the practical aspects of the morning part of the course and we think that these hybrid courses is what we're planning to do for next year at the college when we're running a trabeculectomy course uh, an ocular trauma course a cataract complications course uh, there's no reason why we can't have people from remote locations joining in if they've got this sort of setup uh, and a remote supervisor. So instead of just having 15 people taking part in the course, we can have multiples of that taking part in the course, watching the lectures, going into breakout rooms, being supervised and having exactly the same surgical experience. In fact, I think Rebecca and Sunil maybe got a better deal. They two to one supervision and the trainees had sort of four to one supervision at, at, at the college. Um, so this is something maybe we as a college should be looking to join with the yourselves in India and elsewhere to set up these remote courses or remote courses being staged in India with UK supervised uh, trainees uh, joining in virtually. So it's not just for intraocular surgery. The World Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology, led by Ramesh Kakanoya, who many of you will, will know, and David Granite, we've run these virtual strabismus uh, workshops where we had trainees from around the world joining in uh, with uh, remotely supervised supervision from five expert trainers. This is the desk I'm sitting in front of at the minute. I've got a, a ring light, uh, an iPhone linked up, a camo app that gives a really high quality webcam footage, a strabismus model eye, and the next clip is the WISPOS basic strabismus workshop that we ran. Hetty was in Joburg, Derek was in Sheffield, and they'd never done any strabismus surgery before until this very afternoon. Again, now that's too vertical, Derek. Okay, so that if you do that in real life, you've got to go through this clearer. So if you watch my needle again, if I just try and just trying to make this full screen because I'll just try and show you the difference in angulation. So he was pointing his needle directly down into the sclera with making his first scleral pass. We're just trying to demonstrate how, how not to do that. And a whole different model I here at an angle. So you're approaching it like this. And you're relying on you just going at the right depth. Just push down vertically. So on the sclera, just push down. Go in a straight line and roll your finger and thumb and you'll get the right depth. So at no point am I going like this. It's flat. Pushing it down and then rolling it. This is Derek 40 minutes later. So here is uh, Derek who had done no previous strabismus surgery making two safe scleral passes at the end of our session and bearing in mind his first so these are these models were made by the trainees themselves ping pong ball uh silicon foam and a matchstick um and everybody no matter where they joined us from around the world and there were uh, four different continents were able to make these simple model eyes and if i just forward you on to derek at the end of the case this is him doing a medial rectus recession double loop and this is a guy who'd done no strabismus surgery he had been on the royal college's basic microsurgical skills course a few years ago um, but his needle handling his suturing skills in the space of an hour had developed enormously and i personally would be happy to let him undertake parts of a strabismus surgery case with me in theater on the basis of this and we ran uh, the advanced course uh, literally last saturday when we were doing adjustable sutures uh, plications, transpositions, inferior oblique surgery, 
And all of these are available. If you go onto the Whispers Boss uh, YouTube channel, um, you'll be able to see those in more detail. So we can do it for strabismus surgery. It's not just, and ocular plastic surgery, not just for intraocular surgery. All of the things that you've seen, all the videos you've seen, plus videos of how to actually connect your microscope or the camera uh, to a, a computer onto Zoom call, most of which are done by Sunil and Rebecca, are on the Royal College of Ophthalmologists section of the uh, simulation gallery. So gallery.simulatedoculosurgery.com and in the Royal College section, if you click on that, you come to all these fantastic videos on surgical skills, practice, training modules, training facilities, um, and it's free for everybody to access. So but there's also the uh, Instagram uh, link, which will take you to those videos as, as well. So I'd just like to end by thanking Rebecca and Sunil for all their amazing work and their innovation, for Uday Devgan and to Wispos for their backing of uh, these simulation programs. And I'm just going to stop sharing now. Thank you very much.